Thank you very much, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am a commentator from Nikkei Inc. My name is Kajiwara. It's very nice to meet you. Well, trying to improve the corporate value in our society. That's the title of this session. Why do we have this session? Well, other company management are interested in having the business management to, together with the society. I think uh, all the leaders of the businesses are focusing on how they can coexist with the society. Corporations are public institutions, so unless you coexist with the society, it will not grow with the sustainability. For instance, in the UK, in this year, the Corporate Governance Code has revised, not just for the shareholders, but for the employees, customers, and society. So they need to really have the uh, good relationship with wider scope of these stakeholders. Looking to the US, in 2011, uh, there is a benefit corporation system, which is defining the corporations as yeah, social business, and they have the legal binding. And it's already over 5,000 companies. Even in Japan, there is a ESG, the Environment Society and Governance. And not just the corporations, but investors are looking at ESG. Then what about in South Korea, which is a fourth economic power in Asian region. Now we'd like to ask questions with the leaders from SK Group, and uh, the purpose of this session is how we are going to learn from SK Group. Well, there's one anecdote. I was actually interviewing in Paris in France, and the interview was about the social corporations. To be more specific, the uh, how we can quantify the social contribution by the corporations. And there is a, a consulting firm which is developing that model to quantify the social contribution of the corporations. At the very end, I ask one question. How many companies are interested in the that model? Well, SK Group was the answer. The SK Group was the first company which showed the interest to this uh, quantification of the social contribution. So I would say uh, SK Group is a pioneer. And a uh, somewhat later stage, I became to know that SK Group is a pioneer in this uh, social contribution. So now I hope that you fully learn how they are trying to enable this uh, social contribution. Well, it's been 20 years since he became a leader of the SK Group during the course of 20 years, I think our revenue as well as the number of employees quadruple. So, Mr. Che Di Wong, please give him a big round of applause. Uh, um. English is not mother tongue, so please allow me to using that uh, my mother tongue and Korean. So anyhow, most of the Japanese has to using uh, help from the, the translator. So uh, and I'm really sorry about the English speakers. Uh, allow me to using that the Korean uh, language because of the uh, I have to deliver that the more accurate meaning uh, to the to the floor. So, um, once again, I am Che Duan from SK Group. Thank you very much for invitation to this uh, great conference. This uh, uh, World Economic Forum was how we are going to enable and tackle the business management under this uh, disruptive world. There are many angles to really see the business management. Today, I'd like to discuss from the social value. Also, 
in this uh, disruptive world, how SK has transformed the social value. Japan is not just trying to seek for their profit, but I think uh, Japan understands that you already have the entrepreneurship that you need to grow together with the society. Let's say if you focus on the enterprise model, uh, I think uh, the profit will follow. So enterprise more first before profit, not just for the buyers and also not just for the sellers, but it has to be good for the society. So benefiting all three entities is the philosophy of the Japanese corporations. Well, SK Group, I think uh, corporations have to make the contribution to the economic development. But we also need to produce the social value so that we can coexist and grow together with the society. That is our philosophy. And we are trying to bring the sustainable happiness. And this is the philosophy of SK Group. This initiative or philosophy. In the past, SK Group was quite small, and I think when we established the company, the philosophy sustains since then. For instance, in 1970s, uh, we have to be prepared for the 100 years of the country. So 3 million trees have been planted. Back then, there was no trees uh, on the mountains, but now we have so many trees. So planting trees, just like planting trees, we have to also nurture the employees. So we select the great talents and trying to support them going abroad for the uh, in the overseas. Now we have 750 uh, doctors who are uh, doing the business all over the world. Well, this type of uh, spirit of Japan and also the SK's philosophy, you know, how the societies see these philosophy? I don't think society regards this as enough. That's a problem. Even though we put the best effort, the uh, valuation or recognition is not that enough in our society. And that's a challenge. So fast changing world, uh, th it's really allowing us to really fundamentally uh, transform the value of the corporations. So let me think about this uh, fast changing society from the different angle. As you know, I think uh, digitalization is the first uh, to consider. People are talking about digitalization. People are experiencing digitalization. But uh, what kind of impact do we have? The biggest impact is uh, transaction cost is diminishing. It's closer to zero. So uh, zero transaction cost. I'd like to touch upon what this means at later stage. So there is no transaction cost. Then it will bring hyper-connected society. In the past, students go to the same school and then have the relationship, friendship. But in this uh, hyper-connected society, things are different. Our interest, or maybe the thinking, or philosophy, brief, or maybe the hobbies, or your interest will enable you to be connected to people in the different countries. So it doesn't have to be in the same village, going to the same school, but in this uh, new way of being connected, sometimes it can be stronger. So these two changes will bring what? So maybe I'd like to talk about this from the economical perspective. The market concept is changing. When I was a student in economics, I was learning that the supply demand, the balance is very important. And also we can produce products. And that is called a market. That was what we have learned. 
However, this market is a very abstract concept. Transaction cost is right now zero, and we now live in a hyper-connected world. So there is no uh, meaning to think about this abstract concept. Supplier and buyers have one-to-one -one connection in this world. In the past, they were suppliers, but now they are demanding on the demand side. And there is a one-to-one -one relationship between supply and demand. Traditional market has been disappearing. So what is happening right now? And what kind of problems are we seeing right now? We provide products and services, but they are not sufficient. Customers are demanding something else some additional value. The past customers wanted mass merchandising, mass marketing. However, we have now personalized demand that we have to meet. We have to transform ourselves as well. I would like to expand this story as well. The role of Companies have been has been changing. In the past, companies were pursuing only economic and financial values. That was a good company that pursued such values. However, the world is changing. Not only economic values, companies have to create social values and they have to provide values to the customers. Customers means not only the customers we have right now. I'm talking about potential future customers as well, prospects as well. So we have to create social values for every one of them to become sustainable, to do something good for the society, that's not the only purpose of the company to exist. Sustainability and going concern is very important for companies. That is why we have to contribute to societies. So how SK has done all of them? We have taken four different approaches. So how we have created and pursued social values in SK Group, I'd like to talk about one by one. The first one is called double bottom line. Double bottom line is a concept in accounting. Not only economic value in accounting, we have to measure social values as well. The second point is shared infrastructure. Companies have assets. They have to share their assets with the other companies and the society. That's the concept with which we have to create social values. The third approach is profit organizations. Sometimes in deficit cannot create value for the society. That means they can invest into other social enterprises. The fourth point, happy alliance, I would like to talk about this later. First, I'd like to elaborate the first point of double bottom line. Unless you measure social value, you cannot create social value. Sometimes it's in vain how much you have to create and how much input and output. It's very difficult to measure all of them from the company's perspective. Input, that means how much donation, how much investment as a company. That is the input. However, you cannot measure output. So how efficiently you are using output cannot be described 
that is why I am talking about double bottom line, economic and social values, both of them should be measured. This is what Peter Drucker said. If you can't measure it, you can't manage it. You can't grasp the real situation. So when you measure something precisely, that's for the first time when you can manage it. In SK Group, we have 17 affiliated companies. In October this year, social values are measured as the value in an accounting. And we have to disclose the social value as well. Economic values are measured in an accounting. Social values are not measured so far. So social values should be measured uh, to enhance the activities of corporations. It does not mean you have to be precise to measure the social value. First of all, you have to measure the value. And next year and onwards, we have to have concrete criteria to measure the social value so that we can enhance the value going forward. And that is why we decided to measure the social value. Two, the second point is shared infrastructure. You already experienced shared economy, Uber, Airbnb, already exist. You might have used both of them. As for shared economy, you have experienced those as you can see. However, not all companies are offering such shared assets. So company assets should be shared. If not all the assets, but even partially, you can share the assets so that you can share with each other uh, to contribute to form the social infrastructure by collaborating the other companies as well. Well, I'm sorry, my story might be somewhat abstract, so I'd like to be more concrete. The end of last year, we have the a national gasoline stand gas stations network um, that was opened as a shared infrastructure. We made an announcement about the gas station network last year. And then Caltex, that's our competitor, gave us a proposal for tying up a business. We both have gas stations, but we have the network of post offices and the home delivery infrastructure of about 3,500 to generate a change. That was the proposal. So we have the gas stations, 3,600 of them to sell gas. That was only selling gases, gas, but now we have the network of post office, about 9,600 of them in this network. So this is a huge infrastructure for the customers, very diversified. We have startup companies which can use the infrastructure for their business operations. New opportunities. Well, what I have explained, uh, if the first or second approaches are quite difficult to try, maybe we have another approach. 
Well, there are a lot of social corporations. So trying to develop those social corporations, making investment to those corporations so that their values in a society can be shared. So social enterprise uh, creates 100 of those value, let's say. And if we make investment 30 of them, then that actually means that we are able to share 30 of that 100 uh, values uh, through the investment. SK Group has focused on CSR for quite a long time. And uh, we were quite clear input, but uh, uh, sometimes it's really difficult to see how much output we can actually receive. Measuring output was a difficult task, so maybe the reliability was not that high. So let's say we make investment to the social enterprise, how they are generating value and how much they create value. And we have to be able to measure those so that we can share that information with the original investors. And that is called as a social cre progress credit system. The social enterprise create social value, and they have to be able to measure how much value they are creating. And then uh, they are returning cash in some, they are uh, returning cash. So let's say if it's a uh, $1,000 value created by this uh, social enterprise, maybe maximum of 50% can be returned in cash. That's this system. Why SK Group is doing this? Sometimes I get that question. Well, this is uh, still the trial approach. Social enterprise are creating value, and that can be if it's a cash incentives, meaning that they are able to seek for both profit as well as the value, then with that help, the social enterprise can sustainably grow. So maybe using this as a trial, I hope that if the model is going to be rightly penetrated, I'm sure that we will be able to nurture more of those companies. It's been four years since we started this trial and 188 uh, social enterprises are already using this scheme under this SPC system. Sorry, I think uh, I'm a bit behind the schedule, so I'd like to be quick in uh, going through the presentations. Well, if uh, you think all of those approaches are quite difficult, then you can actually try the simpler approach. The new, the uh, having a lot of companies focusing on the social agenda. Well, each society has different agenda, and uh, many companies or people or individuals can cooperate and collaborate in trying to solve that social agenda. So, we created the program called Happy Alliance. What this program is trying to target is the uh, children who have malnutritional issue. We will feed them. We will try to bring food for those uh, kids who are under the uh, nutritional problems. We are uh, working with different players, so maybe uh, some vitamin manufacturer and other players, maybe when we offer the lunch boxes, they also deliver by car. 
So maybe the tire companies are offering those tires to those vehicles, or maybe the some companies offer the fuel to those uh, vehicles to deliver the lunch box or meals to the uh, kids. So this allows uh, us with the different stakeholders or different players to be involved in trying to address the big malnutritional kids problem. So let me conclude. I think the corporations have uh, new roles. In the past, they are trying to produce the social value. And usually, you have to spend a lot of money. Well, also, it was really difficult to understand what social agenda the different society has. But now we have the hyper-connected society, so we will be able to identify what problems we have to solve. So it's not just trying to seek for the economic value, but we try to solve the social problems, and the corporations should be able to contribute to the solution. So it's not something that you have a choice, but uh, all of those uh, people in our society are our customers. So we should be able to provide the trust to the com com uh, com customers, and that is the social value for the corporations. So we have to get the trust, and uh, that's uh, really a fundamental for the corporations. Creating the social value is our main role. And uh, it's not something that you are mandated, but I think uh, this is a natural role for the corporations. SK Group alone will not be able to achieve this. We have to be united. We have to cooperate together. Well, it's already uh, starting here in Japan. I hope that uh, we'd like to invite more of the Japanese corporations to be on board. How, what help, assistance corporations can offer to our society. Lastly, as you know, this is a poem by Kenji Miyazawa. Not defeated by rain, not defeated by wind. So the corporations to be corporations can create the sustainabilities and also sustainable society. I hope that we will bring certain contribution to the Japanese society as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Che. Well, at the beginning, uh, I talked about I had an interview in France, and I heard about SK Group. It was not a total coincidence. I think uh, the social value and social business management is, is sort of uh, talked about by many companies, but I think uh, SK Group is doing it using the double bottom line. And I think uh, there are not many companies who are already doing in this scheme. So let me go into the uh, QA sessions. I may, I should have uh, spoken in either in English or in Korean, but uh, I'm not good at in both languages, so I will be speaking in Japanese. Well, the number one question is uh, how do you have the balance between the long term business management and short term returns? Well, whenever you talk about the social value, I think a balance is always an issue. To be more specific, if you are trying to create the social value, well, yes, for the corporations to be sustainable in growing, I think it's indispensable. But I think uh, it takes really long time to contribute to the profit of the companies. On the other hand, the Wall Street or stock market always want the corporations for short-term returns. And uh, yes, SK Group has a lot of listed companies underneath of the SK Group. So 
how are you balancing between the long term perspective together with the short term returns? That is a very question, a very good question. Well, shareholders are not only pursuing short term outcome. Safer and sustainable companies are well appreciated by shareholders. What I wanted to say is that even if the short term outcome is not sufficient, more sustainable paths for the company should be communicated to the market. And then we can change the shareholders too. We are pursuing a social value. And I really think the shareholders appreciate it. We are not wasting our money. We are investing into the future and the future customers. That is the attitude of SK. If we understand that, you wouldn't really think about the balance between long term versus short term. Even if the short term performance is not sufficient, as sufficient as you thought, that is that doesn't deteriorate our reputation. Rather, it really enhances our reputation. In the stock market, stock market really appreciate our ESG investment. And I hear our share price is very good today, too. And that's a really a very a new appreciation of the market. So we have to really change very fast if the market is changing fast dialogue between shareholders and companies will change. You are not really pursuing short-term benefits outcome. It's not really good for shareholders. And that is the communication from companies. You have to convince the market. You have to convince the shareholders in that regard. My next question is that we have the special workshop here today to talk about leadership of companies. We have the next generation management we have a lot of attendance in the workshop, so I'd like to ask you this question. Social management, new type of management, and what is the requirement of the leadership for the social management? How would you nurture and foster such human resources? The leadership you required of by companies is when you pursue economic benefits, you have to have certain talents for that. And such human resources are required, as I mentioned before. Uh, we have a different uh, purpose of the companies. We are not only changing ourselves and the other companies in the group, and they are changing as well. In that sense, the required human resources by the society is that balanced human resources and that kind of leadership with good balance, I think, is required. In SK group, We are now fostering not only business managers. When we look at your our training programs, we have an MBA program in the United States, and also we have a special system uh, to pursue social responsibility through which we can uh, foster future leaders. And SK managers uh, go to uh, such social companies to experience to learn how we can nurture the social values and how we can create social values where they can accumulate their own learning experiences. Leadership uh, to uh, comprehend the world can be fostered. But today we have questions from the floor I have received already, so I'd like to ask him 
The first question is that when you don't have certain experience, when you don't have certain knowledge, and when you don't have confidence, still you have to make certain decisions. So in at that time, what encourages you to make the final decision? Not only business beginners, established business personnel has the same experience, no confidence, no experience, no knowledge, but you have to make a decision. Because you have to make a decision, you make the decision. Well, you have some difficulties that continues and you make a decision. But that doesn't end the difficulties. Difficulties continue as you travel. You go to the first destination. For example, your first destination is Tokyo. So you come to Tokyo, but you have the next destination as well. You have to continue your journey. So your journey up to Tokyo had some ups and downs, but you can rectify it. You go to Tokyo, it's not a waste for you. That is a very precious asset for you. You didn't have confident confidence. It was hard for you. You didn't really understand certain things. But let's change the perspective. Well, you are struggling right now, but no one is perfect. No one can solve at the trouble perfectly, but you have to think yourself as number one in the world, and then you have to make a decision. So in the long run, the situation is going to give you a positive experience. OK, so you can't postpone your decisions, but you have to make the decision right now. There is a saying in Korea, you begin something, something and you have achieved already 50%. So first you have to make the decision. You have to start. That's the message I received from him. My last question that came from the floor too. Interesting question. How would you recover yourself when you experience a huge failure? Well, in my career, I had a lot of failures as well. Even if you fail, that's not the end of it. To be precise, you fail. For example, your company goes bankrupt, but you can establish a new company. You will always face a new opportunity. Well, I have an experience in which the company owner passed away. However, I made sure that I don't repeat the same failure. If you have the determination with your asset, you can improve yourself. I think that's a good approach. So don't be afraid and be confident. If you f have fear, you are going to fail. That means this is the analogy I have used a lot. Do you want to challenge a new or do you want to stay in the status quo? It's not slow death. A big change is necessary. Young managers, if you are young, you can make a great impact on the society. And you have to challenge to do so. But what is lacking in the Japanese economy is that we have less entrepreneurs in Japan. The reason for that is the culture of Japan does not allow managers to fail. But that shouldn't be the way. I think the message is that we can accept some failures. Now it's time 
to finish. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tay. Thank you. Tay Wan, Tay, thank you. Mr. Chay Chay Won, Mr. Kajiwara, thank you very much.